for today. Hi people of God, my name is Miriam and I am the host for today's talk show. Yes, keep it coming, share, tell, spread the news, tell your friends, tune in. We are getting ready to host our lovely resident pastor, Pastor George Adegemfi. So keep it coming. I'm going to give you a couple of seconds and then we'll get the show started. Keep it coming, keep it coming. We need more people on live. Share, 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 share. Spread the news, tell your friends, tell your families. Tune in, tune in. We're about to start the show. You can't afford to miss this one. All right, we're just going to start now. All right, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is ICC Talk Show. I am your host once again, Miriam, and I'll be hosting the resident pastor of ICC Luton, Pastor George Adigenfi. Today, I just want to let you know that this is our very last talk show of the year, 2018. So like I said, you can't afford to miss this one. If you know anyone that needs to tune in, let them know now so that they can start tuning in. And we will, we will begin now. So, ladies and gentlemen, Behind your screens, let's all get ready and welcome our lovely Pastor George Adijemfi. Hello. Hi, Pastor. Welcome. Welcome on our show once again. It is always an honor and a privilege to have you beside us. Once again, I know people know you, but I want those who are possibly tuning in for the very first time to know who you are. So if you can just introduce yourself, please. Okay. Once again, uh, first of all, thank you for having me. Uh, I shall host, uh, be part of this last uh, talk show. God bless you, and also I'd like to take this great opportunity to thank God for uh, your life, uh, the Connect team, for the great job that God is using you guys doing to enhance the ministry. May the Lord God continue to bless you. Mm -hmm. Anyway, my name is George Adujemfi. Uh, I am the resident pastor of uh, Inspirational Charismatic Church looting branch uh, we've been here for the past uh, almost 15 years now by the grace of god uh, that's about it <laughs> i don't know whether you need more i see ladies and gentlemen um like i said I've, i'm privileged enough to sit under his anointing he is indeed a great man of god um if you are looking for a place of, to worship and if you live in luton do come by our Sunday services. Uh, we have two sub services. One starts at 9, uh, we finish at 11. Second service starts at 11.30, and we finish at 1.30. Feel free, come. We are a lovely family. We are always welcome, um, welcoming. We want you to come and fellowship with us. Right. So, to start off, Pastor, what has been the most memorable experience for you this year so far? I just wanted to let the viewers know that we are just taking you through a journey of 2018. Um, like I said, we are ending this year, so we just want to do a little bit of flashback with Pastor and share with you what the church has gone through within this year and maybe get you excited for 2019 as well. So what has been your most memorable experience thus far? Well, uh, first of all, uh, I can't actually uh, pinpoint or circle anything out in particular. Beginning of the year, through the uh, leadership of our bishop, Reverend Ed Mensa, a team was given, and that was a, a year of new beginning. And then under that team, we were so blessed to have uh, four uh, quarterly teams as well. And the first one happens to be uh, service, sorry, discipleship, sorry, uh, discipleship. So under the discipleship, we treated so many things and uh, uh, we came out to service and that is where I want us to uh, point out. A lot was said during that area and uh, personally uh, I realized that it affected the church so much and enhanced the ministry especially in the area of people 
availing themselves to serve. And I remember around that time, I had the opportunity to be sent to Ghana to continue the ministry there. And when I returned, the report I received uh, did indicate that uh, the, 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 the teachings and the grace of God, people were truly committed that you didn't see anything going wrong. I mean, whether there is a leader or no leader, the church was run, the ministry, everything was going on perfectly. So if you are asking me, everything went on or has been uh, going on very, very well. But in that area, I thank God for that. Mm. Amen. Definitely. Um, I think, me too, the, the quarterly themes has helped us very much. It has equipped us to be better. Mm -hmm. um, because we hear discipleship, we hear bearing fruits every time, but to actually take time and break it down to, to teach the members is amazing and it actually gets you to open up your mind to it that's even more. True. So that's also been a memorable thing for me this year as well, that's part. Um, we are in a moment at the mem um, of Thanksgiving. That's right. What are you thankful for? Well, according to the word of God, if I should go back there, Bible says that in everything we should give thanks. thanks yeah. So there are probably things that may be personally at table before God that I wanted God to do. Mm. And maybe I haven't seen it yet. That's mm. not mean that God has not done yes, anything. Yes. So in actual fact, uh, in all areas, I am very, very grateful. And uh, I say this with a heart full of gratitude, what the Lord has been doing uh, in terms of the lives of the people in the church, how people are growing. I mean, people that before you were not expecting them to get to a certain level. But nowadays you see them spiritual level, say, Father, I thank mm. you. And when you see that, what else do we want? I mean, when you are growing spiritually, you have everything. Definitely. And that is what I think I'm so grateful and thankful uh, to God about. Thank, thank God you. for that. Thank God for that. Earlier when you mentioned about Ghana, um, I don't, I don't know if you mind sharing with us, but we want to know what exactly was your mission in Ghana? Okay. Briefly. Briefly. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, it is good that you brought this thing up because uh, I think I've been known not to uh, travel a lot, but yes, uh, for exactly. the past uh, <laughs> a year or two, uh, especially in this uh, year in particular, uh, I've been sent out three times. Okay. Uh, and the whole thing is that it is again I bring our Bishop uh, Reverend Sed Mensa in under his leadership uh, at the moment we have uh, seven branches in Ghana and uh, uh, beside the branches also there is a, a, a very massive school that uh, at the moment he is championing the though it's not at the finishing stages yet, but almost there. Mm -hmm. And because of that, uh, the work there has now become so big. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, it is not like uh, one man can handle that uh, work anymore. So because of that, uh, I've been now been sending regularly there to carry the vision, of course, that he has here over there mm -hmm. uh, to make sure that everything is going on uh, smoothly over there. So, Prima, next, uh, sorry, maybe the next time we'll come back in and talk more about the working work Ghana. Ghana yeah. no problem. Um, so, when you went, were in Ghana, did you go to any crusades or did you hold any crusades yourself? Um, did you evangelize on the streets of Ghana? Like, did you do anything? I, I like that. I thank God that you brought this thing up. Uh, yes, indeed. I think uh, I was there. Uh, in February, and mm -hmm. February we had the uh, indoor crusade. It wasn't actually outside; it was in front of our headquarters right. in Ghana, uh, if you like, uh, the main branch in Ghana, which is in Tema. Uh, Afariwa, uh, I can't actually remember, him, <laughs> but let's say Tema Afariwa uh, Junction, thereabout. Uh, we hold an indoor crusade. It was very, very powerful. We had a lot of converts. Uh, to come in, and uh, it was so much. We also did the uh, door to door evangelism, which was so very, very powerful. And I remember telling some of the pastors there that, listen, I mean, England, you're trying to give somebody uh, a track, even the person will throw it back to you or insult you. But here, even once you stretch out your hand to give it to they will actually run to you. You've been praying for people, for Holy Ghost baptism and what have you, on the street. And it's so marvelous. Wow. So, yes, it was so very, very good. And I like it so much. Wow. And I keep doing
doing it all the times I've been there. We keep going out evangelizing on the street. Wow, I love hearing that. I love yeah. hearing that. So, what is the state um, right, right now? I want to know how are the churches in Ghana like? What are the states like? How is it functioning? Is it growing? How many branches do we have in Ghana? Is everything functioning well, basically? Thank you. Uh, as I said earlier on, under the leadership of our bishop, we have uh, seven branches at the moment. Mm -hmm. But not all of them are grown churches. Right, yeah. uh, but at the same time, it is also not where two or three are gathered. Uh, it is growing, but we are not quite there. But it is the vision of our bishop and his leadership for to grow all the churches there. So yes, it is very challenging, mm -hmm. but we are also uh, challenging the pastors there to do their utmost best to grow the churches and that is also the reason why time to time we keep going there holding pastors seminars and uh, symposiums so that the and uh, revivals so that the churches there will grow yeah we thank god for that so if you're in ghana and you have no place of worship i believe we will put the locations Location, of the churches right. on the page. So make sure you go there, visit the pages, visit the churches whilst you're there on holiday. If you have family members who don't have a church, let them go and fellowship with them. I believe it'll be a blessing. ICC is a wonderful family. That's right. So indeed, let them go and, and visit the churches. Thank you very much. Right. Um, once again, this is ICC Talk Show. I am hosting Pastor George Adijemfi, ICC Luton resident pastor. And we're just taking you through a journey of 2018. If you haven't told your friends to join in, let them know now. So, Pastor, um, you mentioned about the four themes of this year. Uh, why? Why? Why four themes? Why? What exactly did God lay on your heart for us to do this? Uh, thank you very much for coming up with this once again. I believe this is the time for us to be able to explain it more to people. Yes, uh, we have our general team, which is uh, a year of new beginning and uh, as I said through the leadership of our bishop uh, he set it out for us but at the same time uh, as a branch also uh, I was also led to have these four teams the reason why uh, this four team also came I know it's by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit but at the same time also to have time to break certain things down mm -hmm. for example when we have one theme is that throughout the year that is what we're going to be talking yeah. about. But four teams, quarterly, helps us to take uh, every uh, quarterly series. Mm. So when we finish the first quarter, you are also jeering up for the next quarter. So the eyes of the people are ready that mm. another thing is also coming up. And it helped a lot. It helped a lot to move the church around, to also to be able to teach the, the, the scriptures very in-depth mm -hmm. so that people understand certain things that oh this is what I'm supposed to do in a church whereas they're just having one theme that oh year of new beginning yeah. beginning of what exactly. yeah beginning of doing that beginning of doing that beginning of doing that changing so many things in your life so that is the reason why I believe we were led to come up with those four sub teams do you mind staying in the full sub team? Right. I, fin I believe we had a discipleship. Yes. We have service. Yes. We have uh, bearing fruit. And then we are in our last quarter, which is ending in the next four days or so. Yes. Keep uh, maintaining your fruits. Wow. Wow. Such powerful four things. Do you see that the members are bearing fruits at the moment based on the four things? To be frank with you, Auntie, yes. And I will say it with a big yes. Because as I said, uh, this year alone, I've been away for about, if I'm not exaggerating, five times. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, all the times that I've been up, I'm, I think I've been up about 10, 15 days or over. Mm. And the church is being run by the leadership of the church. Sure. That's it. And they know what to do. Mm. It's not that pastor lay anything down for them. No, yeah. they actually know what to do. Right. And I believe that is what the church of God at this end time should be about. Mm. It does not base on one pastor. pastor. Yes, we thank God for the leadership of the pastor, but we also need to know that God runs the church with the people in the church. So when we equip the people, of course, the church moves on. Definitely. Amen. Definitely. Definitely. One exciting thing this this year is is the branch in Pakistan. 
it has been such an amazing I, I work with Pakistanis yeah. um, so to hear that we've actually opened a branch in Pakistan was so exciting tell us a bit more about that please. Well, uh, once again we give uh, all glory to God uh, it is not the work of any man I've never been to Pakistan <laughs> myself and I surely believe that neither uh, Bishop, Reverend St. Mensah but we had great opportunity uh, a member in uh, Luton branch, Brother Raj, uh, and uh, okay, Brother Raj, uh, if you are listening or you are watching, uh, we're talking about you. Uh, I believe uh, it was actually beginning of the year, mm. and uh, I personally saw something in him. Mm. And uh, aside that, also one pastor, there was a, a program, Pastor Randolph, also God led through him to speak into his life. Mm -hmm. And I remember when Pastor Randall spoke, I said that uh, he came to see me and I said, well, I've already spoken to this man about what you said. So it is a confirmation yeah. of the Holy Spirit. Uh, not long from that, he approached me. I'm referring to Brother Raj and said that he's going to go back to Pakistan. There are churches there that they want to literally want to give their churches to ICC. Mm -hmm. So I went to London to see Bishop with Pastor Raj. We had a sit down, we talk. And then out of it, now we have a branch. Wow. Uh, to cut the long story short, we have a branch, not branch, branches, branches. Wow. in Pakistan. Wow, glory yeah. be to God, glory be to God. Once again, if you're in Pakistan, make sure you head over to the branches that you and can't. I believe that the, the, the addresses and everything <laughs> is going to be on our website most later definitely, on. Most definitely. Are you planning to go to Pakistan? <laughs> <laughs> I have been invited. Oh, wow. I have been invited. Uh, uh, we just want to seek the will of God. Uh, and uh, the, the, when the, will, uh, the door opens. Ah. <laughs> I'll be coming with you, Pastor. God bless you. <laughs> now that I, I believe you speak uh, the I language. Do, I do. Into, small, small. Yes, yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay, we thank God for that. Once again, I am hosting the lovely Pastor George Adijemfi. If you're joining us, Keep it coming, like, share, comments. If you have any questions, feel free to ask and we will endeavor to also answer it for you. I just want to ask quickly um, a question, and I believe some people are also asking the same question. How do you maintain your fruits? How do you maintain bearing fruits, if I should put it that way? Okay, all right. Of course, to be able to maintain something, you first have to get hold of it. That's right, yeah. And to get in hold of it, a Bible made us to understand that God has given us everything. But so, uh, the fact that God has said that he has given us everything does not mean that it is just you just have to go and grab it. It is by growing in the Lord. Mm. That is how I see it. Mm. And once you get to know that this is there for me, you go for it. Mm -hmm. uh, so once you get hold of it, also it becomes yours. Mm -hmm. But once it is not there, mm -hmm. you don't have it. So the main thing is that to get what is there. What is fruit are we talking about? The things that through Jesus, through Jesus Christ, God has deposited in us. What are the things like that? There are things God has given to us through his son Jesus Christ that we should go out there uh, healing the sick, uh, bringing the lost souls back mm -hmm. into the kingdom. Mm -hmm. All those things are there. As a matter of fact, these are the things that Jesus spoke about, yeah. about us for us to do. Yes. And uh, once we begin to do that, yes, we are maintaining the food, we are building the kingdom, and that is what we are talking about. We are not really referring to uh, physical things like I've got that, oh, I've yeah. got that. Those are nothing. Those are perish perishable things. It's not going to maintain, uh, remain. But we are talking about bringing the lost souls, uh, keeping people in the house of God, letting them to keep their faith and not falling down or falling away from their faith. Those are the things we are talking about. Mm -hmm. And once we are there, then we keep that which they are, God has through them, God has brought them into the kingdom. Definitely. That is what we are referring Definitely. to. Thank Definitely. you. Um, the certain thing is that sometimes when it comes to lost souls, mm -hmm. do you think there are lost souls in the church itself? Okay. Because then it becomes another... Uh, job for the members of the church to also win that themselves before they go out to win the losses outside yes i know there is a saying that uh, uh, those that are already in mm. we've already won them mm. so we should go out but uh, 
There are also a lot of people that are in the church that in actual fact they are lost. Yeah. Uh, and these are some of the reasons why uh, we come up with those uh, teams so that we'll be able to teach somebody may be sitting in the church paying tithe, doing offering whatever uh, part of the department but they don't even know that they are born again or not mm. and this is very very scary mm. and uh, to be frank with you we are trusting God that the coming year these are some of the things that we want to talk about in the church for people to know who they really really are not just church goers sitting in the church just put something on and come but those are the things we need to know. So yes, your question is, are there lost souls in the church? Yes, there are, and we need to teach. It is the work of the church to make sure that they are saved, and when they are saved, they can go out. That's it, exactly. I, th I think in order for you to be able to step out, you need to work on yourself. That's right. Because they are looking at you. You That's are, true. like they say, you are the Bible that everyone reads. So that is true. If you have not worked on yourself, if you have not worked on your fruits, how can you then spread and go outside and, and share the gospel. I agree with you. So that's an encourage, encouragement to you all viewers that work on your salvation, work on yourself, work on seeking the kingdom of God first before you go out and let someone seek the kingdom. Okay. I have a question for 2019. How does one not lose the zeal and the fire? I know we shouldn't put a year or a date on it. God works in his own times and season. Um, but for anyone that's possibly expecting something great for next year, how does one not lose their zeal and fire? Well, I don't know whether I got the question right, uh, because you added uh, a, a date to it, like 2019. 19, okay. But I think it works in 2018 18, so. yeah, exactly. Yeah. But uh, you see, we, we are people of God. And our Bible says that we can be pressed down, we can be moved about and all things. He said in all things, I mean, we've been led away like a sheep to the slaughterhouse. But in all, we are more than conquerors. Yeah, yeah they'll make, there's going to be a lot of fighting, there's going to be a lot of hardship, there's going to be a lot of troubles. But in all, Bible says that God has made us people who do not quit. Mm. So for the fact that maybe something were not able to come to pass or to fulfillment in uh, 2018, does not mean that God has not done anything for you. Mm. Uh, and to be frank with you, I will probably not search 2019. It's going to be a different year yeah. from 2018. Mm. Why? Because it should be that whatever state we find ourselves in should be enough for us yeah. all. So yes, we can hope and see better things coming, but God can do anything. Even if we have seven days before we enter into, or eight days we enter into 2019, anything can happen. Exactly. I don't know whether that is the direction that you wanted me to yeah, go. Yeah, of course, yeah. of course. Just know that the, the time is now. Thank you very much. You shouldn't wait for 2019. Thank to, you very much. To, to think that you will lose zero and, and that is higher. that is that yeah, is right. Definitely. So do you mind encouraging the viewers at the moment who are still believing for one thing or another that before the year ends, I don't know, maybe God God will turn things around. So if you just encourage them that they should not lose hope, they should gaze upon the beauty of God. Like, just encourage them. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Mm. Auntie, uh, the, the, the truth is, you know, probably I'll draw the cue from uh, the three Hebrew men, mm -hmm. Shadrach, Meshach, and uh, Abednego. They made a profound statement mm. that, Ken, we're not going to argue with you, that uh, we're not going to bow down. Uh, you've said that you're going to do whatever that you're going to do, but our God will come and rescue us. But even, even, that, that is my point, mm -hmm. even if he did not come, he does not come, we're still not going to bow down to you. Yeah. So, yes, there may be a, a lot of things, there may be a lot of uh, problems or certain prayer requests that you laid before God and has not yet materialized. Does not mean that God has not done anything in your life. Getting the thing will probably not do anything for you. One thing you need to know that the God that we serve, Bible says that he does not change. Mm. So he is able to do it. And also there is time for everything. So my dear brother, my dear sister, all you got to do is to wait for the right time. And God is not going to disappoint you. Can I have a bit of water? Of course. Water? <laughs> of course. <laughs>
All right, once again, people of God, like I said, we are interviewing, or oh, we are speaking to our lovely resident pastor, Pastor George Adijemfi. Someone asked a question, Pastor. Um, his name is Esmond Enoch. He said, how many branches are in Pakistan now and how are they doing? All right, uh, thank you. Uh, personally, uh, I, I have not been there. Uh, our brother, Brother Raj, recently returned from Pakistan and gave us report. Uh, myself and of course our bishop that uh, at the moment they've been able to open six branches wow. that is the report we receive from him wow. and uh, of course he also sent us some pictures mm -hmm. showing some of the work was done there mm -hmm. so uh, from the eyes of our dear brother we have six branches there wow yeah. glory to god glory to god i hope that answered your question and uh, i believe the, according to the pictures that we saw also, yes. uh, they are doing very well. Very well. Yeah. well glory to God. Glory to God. Evangelism, Pastor. What is the church doing to encourage evangelism based on 2018 for 2019? 2018 for 2019. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, evangelism has become something that a lot of Christians are staying away from, mm. especially at this uh, end time. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's also something I strongly disagree with. Uh, I, I don't know whether the messages that we are sending from the pulpit is what may be uh, not encouraging a lot of people uh, doing that. But uh, as you may know, uh, we try and do our best here uh, uh, in ICC, or if I should say, looting, yeah. uh, not to be <laughs> uh, something uh, yeah. to encourage others to go out. We ourselves go out trying to go out time to time to do as much as we can mm -hmm. to bring people uh, into the house of God. You know, let me use this point to say this it is our mission. Definitely. Number one, it may be fear, number two, it may be ignorance. Why? Because they've not been told. Mm -hmm. If they've not been told, how are they going to go? You know. And number three, probably apathy. We think that well, it's supposed to some other people's job to do, so I don't care. But this is the mission. This is what actually Christ left us to mm -hmm. do: mm -hmm. to tell the message to the untold that Jesus Christ is coming back again. This is the mission, and we should do whatever that we can. Spend more money as a church in that direction in that area so that the message will go hmm. amen amen you actually asked him a question i was going to ask you why why do some christians find it so hard to evangelize um but you've pinpointed that it could be fear yeah um because gone are the days i would also be afraid yeah. to evangelize maybe because someone would shout at me or mm -hmm. something like that but i think if you understand what you are doing That's right. you would not put fear ahead of you you would make sure you go out there and do it um it's just unfortunate that obviously some people still do not grasp the concept of evangelism right. um but i'm praying to god that possibly through this talk show your mind will be renewed that's right do you have anything else to say about yes it? yes i i would like to uh, say a bit more yes uh, i believe not only icc church but all the churches out there, I believe we should all gather together and teach the church Definitely. on evangelism. Definitely. Yes, sometimes it is very scary. It is to go out there and do what we've been asked to do. But you say something. Mm -hmm. If this is your duty, if this is your assignment, uh, if your job to go out and talk to people, uh, physically, naturally, won't you go and talk to mm -hmm. them? So if we see that this is what God has given to us as his people, yeah. to go out there and preach the gospel, we will go. And also as church, we need to um, uh, not enforce, encourage the people mm -hmm. a lot to go and then as we invest more, find out more the other things that we can do to attract the people, I believe it will work so much. Definitely, definitely. It's a great investment. Mm -hmm. um, like, like Pastor said, we have been called to do that. Mm -hmm. So you have to use all your might and power to go ahead and spread the gospel. Like you said, Jesus is coming back again. They need to hear that message. But it's your duty. It is your responsibility. You need to challenge yourself to step out and make sure you spread the gospel. Amen. I have a question. What are your plans for next year? <laughs> And that, do you have a specific outline for ICC, possibly ICC Luton? 
uh, of course, uh, but first of all, let me also take it from uh, uh, this angle. Okay. We, we are a branch, yes. yeah. and that means we take our, uh, if you like, instructions from, and the from the headquarters. And every year, through the leadership of our bishop, he will set out the vision and also the theme mm -hmm. of the year. And I believe we have it now, uh, but we normally give it out uh, 31st or first week in January. Uh, so we, whoever put the question now, with all due respect, won't be able to break it down here on this uh, platform. But surely on the 31st, if you are part of ICC, church or not please we we'll put everything okay. down we we'll break it down again this year oh, sorry the coming year also we're going to go under four uh sub teams as well okay. as yeah. well as our main uh thing uh, and i believe it's going to be very powerful one thing i would like to give it out uh, evangelism is definitely going to be one of them and uh, we're going to do a lot of things to go out and and encourage the people also in the church mm. to be part of it. Okay. Praise God. I'll come for 2019. Uh, me too. <laughs> okay. How do you gauge someone um, to be ready for, to be a leader? How do you get, like, do they uh, have to, to be to, married to, and stuff like that? <laughs> uh, to, to measure somebody's maturity, mm. uh, of course, in order to discern, to see somebody, you got to be a uh, spiritual person to see somebody's spirit, uh, spiritual level yeah. uh, and I thank God uh, as pastor God g blesses us with spirit of discernment mm -hmm. uh, it is not really a person getting married or being a certain holding certain things before they can be uh, elect to be a leader or anything as we know in traditionally mm -hmm. no it is the spiritual values of the person. Uh, if we have an 18 year old who can go out there, uh, do a lot in the kingdom, and we have 35 or 75 year person sitting in the church warming the, uh, <laughs> the seats, the, the seats yeah. uh, please let, let's be careful here. Definitely. I think, of course, we, we count their maturity uh, age wise, okay. but there are certain things in the kingdom, it is not about age. Mm. Tumoti was that a teenager. Okay. We have David was that a teenager. We have so many people in the kingdom that they are actually, they were very, very young, but mm -hmm. God used them to do so many things. So if they are doing that, why can't we use them to serve in the kingdom? Definitely, definitely. Once again, people of God, we are gathered here <laughs> speaking to Pastor George and Jeffy. If you have any questions, feel free to ask questions. I'm waiting for your questions. We want to answer them for you. Feel free, ask your friends and family to ask questions as well, and we'll be, do our best to answer it for you. Someone's asked a question here, actually. What is Christmas about, Pastor? Oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what is Christmas about? Of course, we, we are sitting uh, <laughs> under a big Christmas tree here. I think uh, yesterday we had uh, our carols night. night, a very powerful carols night, and the message that came out, Christmas is all about Christ Jesus. That's it. That's it. It's all about Christ That's Jesus. It. Yeah. Uh, we, we just celebrate Christ. Uh, I mean, it's not about, as I said uh, during the message, commercialization mm -hmm. of Christmas, buying gifts, being the, it is about what Christ has done for us. We know Christmas as the time that Christ was born, mm -hmm. uh, as the scripture says in Isaiah chapter 9. And we thank use that opportunity to echo, speak more about Christ, mm -hmm. his coming back. Now it is about his coming back. It is not about the time that he was born. Mm -hmm. he has been, he's been born, he's been here, he's done his part. Now it is the time that he's coming back. So the message now is that the Christ that was born as a child is not coming as a child oh. anymore. He's coming with a reward to everyone who wow. is ready to go back with him. Wow, wow. That's, that was a message. <laughs> very deep, very deep. God bless you, sir. We have a revival coming up. Yes, we do. What should we expect for that revival? <laughs> <laughs> and if you can say the dates as well, just in case anyone wants of to. Of course, of course, of course. The revival starts uh, on Friday, uh, that is 28th. 
and it's going to run through to 31st. It is actually four days uh, fasting and prayer revival uh, under the team Breakthrough. Mm. Uh, uh, this was, uh, we came up with this, not just the team, I think we were praying, mm -hmm. and that team came up. Uh, because we are about to enter into uh, a new year, mm -hmm. uh, we are going through that year mm -hmm. with His grace, with His power, with His wisdom, with everything, meaning that Bible says that God has made everything possible for us. So we are breaking through. Mm. We are moving into a new level, yeah. a new dimension, another level. And that is why this team is about. So whatever thing, as you said earlier on, has not yet materialized in your life, it doesn't matter. You are still breaking, breaking through. through. There is nothing that is going to stop you. You are breaking through. There is a lot of news of hopelessness, mm. a lot of news of despair, disappointment. It doesn't matter. You are breaking through. Breaking through. So so that is why we are coming up with this uh, uh, four days supernatural heaven <laughs> on earth uh, revival. revival. <laughs> don't don't exempt yourself. Definitely, yes, God do is not going to bless it. you so do much. Do not miss it. Yeah. Break, we're breaking through. Breaking through. It's a key yeah, word that you have right. to take with you. We're that's breaking right. through. Yeah. So nothing can break you, but you're no, breaking no, no, through. No. Thank you. That is also powerful. This message. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Pastor. Um, what have you? What have you? done different this year what what can you say you've done different this year mm, good one <laughs> uh, a leader who cannot uh, learn mm -hmm. uh, should I say I don't know whether I'm putting it right uh, a leader who refuses to learn uh, cannot be a, a good leader mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. uh, one will say, I believe, I think uh, Boutros, Boutros Gale, one time uh, United Nations General Secretary said that it's only a fool who refuses to learn. Yeah, yeah. Of course, as we are going about every single day, you learn. You learn. Of course, there are things that maybe you do, and sometimes you sit down and you ask yourself, maybe I shouldn't have done it this mm -hmm. way. But believe you me, in all the things that I'm seeing, uh, God is doing has made me more humble to mm -hmm. serve mm -hmm. uh, the people because the more you serve the people, the more you feel rewarded. Yeah. So uh, uh, in the area of service, I will go back. I probably would have spent more time there teaching mm -hmm. the people to know that this is what God has called us to do. So maybe, maybe another time, that is another area that maybe I will spend more time there. But you know, I'm very grateful. I'm very, very Thank grateful. God. So do you think you're going to implement services well into the year coming? When the opportunity comes, yes. Uh, <laughs> from, I'll do that, yes. yes. We thank God <laughs> for that. We thank God for that. I just have a question here quickly. How, how do you gauge the impact concerning discipleship? I, I, I know that you've touched on it, but how do you gauge the impact concerning discipleship? Uh, it was, uh, uh, like I said, uh, to weigh in something or to measure something, sometimes it is a, very, a bit difficult mm. to, to do. But once you get time, the opportunity to teach. You see, one thing that sometimes the body of Christ mm -hmm. we are not good at is that we, we don't teach mm. the people. We don't teach. Mm -hmm. You see, we, we think that we are preaching, we are preaching, but sometimes also we need to take time and teach the people mm -hmm. this is what the whole thing about and when you teach the people realize that this is my assignment mm -hmm. this is what i should be doing of course i've seen a lot of changes but we still need to do more mm -hmm. we still there's more room for improvement in that area i don't know whether i answer no, your you question have, you yeah have. We thank God for that. I just have another question. Um, so you mentioned about Christmas being commercialized. How can we Christians bring the meaning back into the world? Auntie, well, the question was about Christians, in a way, and meaning back to the world. That is evangelism. Go out there yeah. and preach the gospel, mm -hmm. he says. Go out there. That's right. That's right. These people there, the reason why they are doing that, they don't know because nobody has gone to tell them. That's true. That is true. And sometimes we even fall into it. Mm. 
the, the Christmas trees and the Santa Claus. <laughs> Listen, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> but I think sometimes we forget the true meaning behind um, why we... I, I don't say we celebrate Christmas, but we fellowship mm-hmm. um, within that moment. Um, so we need to understand the reason behind it That's and right. not just take advantage of the fact that everyone else is doing it, so we should yeah. go ahead and do it. Um, I just want to quickly backtrack and go to Ghana once again. Um, by the grace of God, I know we are uh, opening a university soon. Soon. Yeah. How is that going so far? Uh, I think I'll tap on it a little bit. And uh, soon, B- Bishop is also going to have a meeting with the leaders of the church and the pastors and possibly the pastor's wives to share this vision okay. uh, uh, to all of us. And so uh, I believe we're going to get more, and the churches are now going to other branches in the UK mm-hmm. are now going to talk about it a lot. The project is going going very well. It's a very massive, and I say massive, and I'm not exaggerating. Wow. Wow. Massive, massive. The land is on it, the, uh, the building dwells, it, it is massive. Wow. I mean, the pictures and everything is going to come uh, on the internet. Everybody is going to see it. Majority of the leaders in Luton and London. And mm-hmm. probably hollow. Mm-hmm. Uh, they've been there. They've seen the project, and it's massive. Uh, it's going well, and it's eating a lot of money. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> we we are praying that God will grant unto us the resources to be able to uh, do whatever that is needed to do there to bring it to completion. Mm-hmm. But uh, it, it's going very well. We it's going God very well. That. We thank God for that. We can't wait for that to also launch soon. Soon, yeah. Soon, we can't yeah. wait for that. Yeah. It's, it's such an amazing feeling to know that you're coming from a church that are doing great things for the community i'm mm. not saying that other churches won't do that of but course, yeah. obviously this is my home and mm. so to see that your family are also doing great it's an amazing thing um i want to touch on christmas because yeah. that, that's the season we are in right yes. now um pastor why do we still i still want to start understand, us to understand why we still forget the meaning behind christmas um i don't want you to preach but just to tap onto it more so that people will understand it as you said you don't want me to preach so i'm not going to uh, <laughs> no, preach. preach but to be frank with you again i will go back to what we are saying in a church mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you see sometimes we want to say things that people will feel good but the whole thing about Christ, mm-hmm. it's not about people it's going to feel good. Mm-hmm. You see, so I, I say that the, the message that we are putting across should be changed. We need to let the people know the real reason yeah. of Christmas. Yeah. And that is to suffer for Christ. Mm-hmm. We need to mm-hmm. suffer. We need to be ready. Mm-hmm. We need to go through the suffering. Mm-hmm. We need to go through the suffering. A lot of Christians, we pampering ourselves Mm -hmm. nowadays so much Mm -hmm. in so many areas. And I believe that if we are waiting for Christ Jesus to come and he's coming for uh, his saints, we need to go out there and challenge ourselves and challenge the church members and challenge everyone there to be ready and speak a lot about Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Someone asks, was Jesus born on the 25th? (laughs) I don't know. <laughs> uh, I think it was a, it's a mentality. Yes. <laughs> the Asians brought to, to the world. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, sometimes there are certain things that there is no need to, uh, if you like, argue about it because it's not going to take us to heaven. It's not yeah. going to help us spiritually. It's not going to do anything. Let's tap on the things that are meant for us. Mm. You know, where was Joseph mother and things those things are irrelevant. Yeah. That's right. So there are very things that are very important that we need to think about. I believe we need to focus on those things. Definitely. I think yesterday at Carol's night I mentioned that there's a reason why he was born. That's right. And through that reason is why we are in existence today. Thank you. Um so even though we, we, we claim that he was born on the 25th or we claim that Christmas is the day of Jesus, we also need to understand that there's a reason why he, he was born. That's right. there's a, there's, there was a mission, there's a purpose behind that, and so we need to also fulfill that, that purpose. That's Do you want to add on to possibly what I've just said now? Yes, so. true. Oh, you want me to add <laughs> something? Oh, I don't have much to say. As, uh, <laughs> I take your word for it. I don't want to sound preachy. Uh, you know, when pastors get the opportunity, they want to use it to <laughs> preach. But I don't want to sound preachy. But Auntie, I am 100% with you. Mm. I am 100%. The message has been lost. We need to bring back the message. 
Yeah. We need to bring back the message. It is all about Christ Jesus. Yeah. It is all about his suffering. It is all about we committing to what we have accepted to do mm -hmm. and do it right. And I believe it will open the understanding of the people more. Definitely. Amen. Amen. So if you were to review 2018, mm -hmm. possibly tell me how it has gone in, wor in words or sentences or in a paragraph, how you f however you feel like expressing 2018. 2018 has been a, a, a very, no, we still have some days some left, days, yeah. but uh, a great year, mm. a great year. Until maybe, as I said, uh, the way probably I wanted certain things to go, but that doesn't mean that uh, God has not done anything. Definitely. Probably that, that way that probably worked much better for us. But it's been, it's been a, a very great year, a very rewarding year. We've seen a lot of things happening spiritually, physically, materially, economically. A lot of things, a lot of things. Some of the things that we set up has been fulfilled. Of course, some of them we are nowhere near. Mm -hmm. uh, but in all, God is great. He's doing so many things. He has done so many things. And we are so grateful for that. Amen. Thank God for that. 2018 has indeed been a great year. I do apologize for bouncing topics back and forth. No but problem they keep at coming, all. They keep coming in. I just want to go back to Ghana. <laughs> so, um, do you think that the focus has been on Ghana too much? And that those that are here have been neglected? I wouldn't say neglected, um, but I would say possibly pushed back a bit and just focused on yeah. Ghana alone. <laughs> Do you think that's the case? Uh, I, I don't think so. I think the reason why probably people see it like that, especially in Luton, <laughs> uh, probably people may see that because I'm not a person that used to travel a lot. Uh, for the past, uh, I believe the church is going to be 15 years this wow. coming year, which we have something for it anyway. Yes. That is for another talk show. <laughs> uh, uh, we've... I've not been traveling a lot. Mm -hmm. It's only about two years ago that uh, this kind of a uh, lot of traveling has come actually uh, more thin. Yeah. But also one thing that I would like to say is that there are a lot of servants of God in this ministry mm -hmm. that are doing great job. Mm -hmm. They stand and speak the word of God or direct the people in a way that I will never be able to do myself. Mm. So, of course, God is doing wonderful things. And besides also that, listen, we are not going to be here forever. <laughs> so, so, yes, we may see a little bit of neglect and things like that, but in time it will change. Mm -hmm. Because people will start now getting used to some of the ministers in the house. That's true. And it, it all helps their church to grow. To grow, yeah. That's true. Yes. That is true. Once again, viewers... We are live with Pastor George Adijemfi, resident pastor of ICC Luton. We are taking you through a journey of 2018. We are speaking about Ghana. We are speaking about the church itself, the four themes we have learned so far. It is a great honor to have him on our panel. Once again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. We are going to round up soon, but I just want you to keep asking the questions. We are open. The floor is open. Feel free. Pastor, once again, I just want to say thank you for being on our show. We are not done yet, <laughs> but I just need to ask you a few more questions before we head on and close. Is there anything that you feel like you want to encourage the pastors out there? I know that sometimes we forget that pastors are human. Um, we forget that they go through certain situations in the house of God. Do you have any encouragement to share with the pastors? Uh, yes, uh, uh, I do. Uh, and as I said, uh, pastors go through a, a lot of things, okay. and uh, uh, most of the time you don't have anybody to talk to. So you, you keep it to yourself. Uh, and also, the, the people that God has uh, given to us, mm -hmm. they, they are our people. We, we love them, and because of that, whatever they go through, it's like you are going through yeah. yourself. But uh, I believe beginning of the year, not right beginning, I think somewhere around uh, the first or into second quarter of the year, my son, Micah, had an accident mm -hmm. in school and uh, uh, really uh, got into me. Mm -hmm. It really got into me uh, because I remember 
and there was a program and I prayed for him during the program and it's about two or a week later that an accident took place and uh, I remember some of the church members wanted to come to the house and this became a topic uh, but uh, I'm such a person that there are certain things that I know if it's by the spirit of God I won't even I won't tolerate it mm -hmm. at all mm -hmm. I will just uh, go ahead and do it wanted to come to the house and pamper him and do certain things so I stopped everything everybody not to come to the house mm -hmm. because I said that in a week's time he will be coming to church because I was trying to believe God that yeah. he will get healed and yeah. come and indeed he he, he came yes. uh, but it was a, a very stressful time it was it was because uh, the thing really hit me I remember standing there looking at the leg and everything and uh, 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 it, it was tough but Bible says that in all things we should give thanks to him and indeed God lived to prove himself that he is God yeah. and uh, uh, not long time he was healed of that thing so uh, yes we go through certain things that sometimes is beyond our control mm -hmm. a lot of things mm -hmm. but as the same way that we preach to the people the same way that we took the word mm -hmm. so sometimes when the word of God is coming you may think that it is for the members don't, don't you know the pastor is preaching to himself, himself. Yeah. Because it is what has encouraged me that is also coming up. That's right. Thank you. So do you want to let the pastors possibly encourage them? Well, uh, I take this great opportunity. I know there are great, wonderful men of God out there. But people of God, yes, we may go through a lot of things. Paul said it clearly. I remember scripture. Paul said that with this, things, I, with this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times. But what did the Lord say? He said, my grace is sufficient. So let's know that the grace of God is available, no matter what we are going through. Let's keep on. Let's keep on fighting. God is there with us. You are doing a great job, Pastor. Whatever that you are doing, whatever members that you are taking care of, you are doing a great job. And keep on doing it. God is with you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Indeed, he is with you. Any new branches in the UK? <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. That's a very good topic. Uh, I think at the beginning of the year, we, or somewhere in the year, we got uh, permission from our Bishop Reverend St. Mensa to open a branch in Dunstable. Uh, everything was in process, everything uh, done, and we were meant to actually, uh, two dates were set. Mm -hmm. One was actually in November, but uh, there was a program and kill that thing off and another one was meant to be December and I believe what happened is that the place that we got for the thing they kind of redrew the thing so that one is still in the pipeline now we are thinking of other uh, dance table or stop sleep okay. and definitely the coming year is gonna come on if you don't mind me asking the question why so close to home so yeah <laughs> Well, it's true. Uh, I've had these questions uh, being asked before. You know, yes, we are in Luton, but uh, from Dunstable to Luton is a bit far. I believe it is about two and a half, but it's more than even that, mm -hmm. to this place. And nowadays, it is not like uh, uh, days that people go to their biological church. When I say biological church, it is where my mother went, mm -hmm. so I am also going there. It's not like that anymore. Now people choose to go to church where they want to go to. It's not because the mother was there, the father was there. Mm -hmm. So because of that, now people don't travel far anymore mm -hmm. to church. So they want something locally that can serve the purpose and everything they will join. And because of that, that is why we are coming up with sub-branches. Okay. Uh, so that it will allow people to go to wherever that they want to worship. And also the ministers and the people that God has given unto us, it gives them also the opportunity to mm. start doing what God has deposited in them to do. Definitely, definitely. Um, so in that case, does that mean um, that some of our members, if they live around that, those areas, they can go to that particular church? Certainly, certainly. It's a choice. It's a branch. Uh, I think I remember saying something some time ago. This is where maybe sometimes some of us pastors, we get things wrong. When you go to a places where they sell furniture, mm -hmm. sometimes you go there and you see a lot of furniture shops. Right, yeah. Why do they do that? Mm -hmm. Because when you get there, you have a choice That's right. where you want to go to. Right. 
and if you choose to go to this one, another one will choose to go to another, and that is what it is. So if we have four branches in Luton, and one choose to go to Stopsley, one choose to go to Dunstable, or uh, which place are we? <laughs> Luton <laughs> uh, Central or whatever. Yeah. It's the same church. Yeah. Yeah. It is the same church. It is how you build a church. That's that is what is important. That's right. Yeah. Amen. Once again, uh, we are here speaking to Pastor George Adijerfi, the resident pastor of ICC House of Prayer, Luton Branch. He's also the general overseer of ICC Worldwide, isn't it? Bishop I'm, is going to be <laughs> his assistant. assistant. General, Sorry, Bishop. Assistant forgive Deputy me. General forgive Overseer. Me, forgive me. Forgive me. Um, but it's, it's actually an honor. It's a privilege um, uh, to also bear that title. We're How do you God. feel carrying such mantle, actually? Uh, it is huge. It is big. Mm. Uh, I don't talk about it that much. You I don't, don't. introduce <laughs> myself in that area. Uh, but I, I thank God. I thank God for our leader, Reverend Sir Mensa, uh, for... Uh, trusting me enough uh, to uh, place me in that position. Uh, 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 we thank God for that. <laughs> yes, yes, it's a huge, it's a huge honor. Uh, but uh, I, I think more about uh, the work that uh, entails. Uh, the work that entails. It entails a lot of work. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot of work. You need to set yourself up for so many things. And uh, I thank God for the grace given unto us to do that. There was a proud moment when, I, when he, he was given such, such mantle. I just want to quickly encourage anyone within the show that whatever you have gone through in 2018, you are breaking through. Um, do not give up. God hasn't given up on you. He said he's not going to leave you nor forsake you. So indeed, 2018 must have been challenging for you. But don't forget that there's a road ahead of you in 2019 in which you will cross over. Pastor, any encouraging words you want to give to the viewers as well? Sure, 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 sure. You know, uh, the, 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 the moment in which we find ourselves, sometimes you may think that uh, you've not achieved a lot. But... To be frank with you, it is not about us. And I keep going back to the point, especially uh, three or four weeks ago, we were praying last uh, one of the Fridays after church. And uh, uh, I received this message. And uh, I've been preaching that message, I've been about two or four times now, that we should not, we should hold on to our faith. And that is our everything. People of God, there are a lot of things that maybe we put our hearts in it that we want God to do for us. Oh, I want to get married. I want to buy a car. I want to buy a house. I want to, buy, I want to do so many. Yes, it is possible. But the thing is, none of them, none of them, none of them, we will not be able to take them to heaven. The only thing that can take us to heaven, it is our faith. So people of God, yes, in the time that we are looking for other things in life, Bible says that we should seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things shall be what? Added. Please, Jesus first. And as we go that way, every other thing shall be added. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. We are going to slowly round up. I'm just going to quickly announce a few things. So we meet here Tuesdays for Bible study, 7 o'clock to 8.45. Friday prayer meeting 7 to 9 p.m. And Saturdays we have our usual activities. And on Sunday we have two services, as I mentioned in the beginning, 9 to 11 and 11 30 to 1 30 p.m. Do not miss out. Like, once again, quick announcement the revival happening next week, Friday. Make sure you come, let your friends and family know you do not want to miss out. Believe you me, you don't want to miss out. I'm already excited speaking to Pastor about it. So, how much more? us having to experience such supernatural anointing and power on that particular day or for the four days That's actually true. um again we are meeting here on the 31st night and christmas day christmas That's day right. in the yeah. morning in the morning 10 10 o'clock 10 o'clock yeah. so if you don't have anywhere to go do join us and let's fellowship together um we just want to round up any last remarks Good, good. Uh, I think I've already said a few things, and because of the time, I cut it short. <laughs> uh, I, I want to finish up by saying, you see, that this, this is a scripture yes, good. that I would like to read. I think it will be very, very much. I think it is 2 Timothy uh, 2.10. Uh, let me get there quickly. 
uh, and then uh, read it out. I mean, if you are home, please read it with us. Second Timothy 2 10, I believe. Uh, I get it right. Second Timothy, please bear with us. Second Timothy 2 10. Yes, please. Right. Uh, it says that. So I am willing to endure anything. If it will bring salvation. Mm. Such a powerful scripture. Mm. It says, I am willing to endure anything. If it will bring salvation and eternal glory in Christ Jesus to those God has chosen. And I will leave you with this message. It says that, and I am willing to do or to endure anything anything as long as it's going to bring salvation to someone to ourselves to our loved ones to anybody out there and it says that eternal glory eternal glory not to glorify ourselves not to share our titles not to share things that we've been able to achieve not to show off our certificates not to show off what we've been able to do but it says that things that will bring eternal glory to god and listen to this it says that in Christ Jesus to those God has chosen. Mm. Meaning that he's talking to us. Mm. Anything that will, will, will bring salvation, let us endure it. Mm. Yes, it may be difficult. It may be tough. But as long as it's bringing salvation to someone, glory to God, let us do it. God bless you. God bless you. Have a wonderful Christmas. Yes. May the Lord God be with you. Your life will never, ever be the same. Stay blessed. Amen. Indeed, like he said, Merry Christmas in advance and a happy, prosperous New Year. We can't wait for you to cross over with greatness. Cross over now, in fact. Let us start now. Let your 2019 begin now. Once again, thank you so much for tuning in with us. I do apologize if you have asked any questions and we weren't able to answer them. We believe that there will be a next time. Um, the year 2019 we will host another talk show whereby you'll be able to get the opportunity to ask questions once again this is our very last talk show of 2018 we have so much in store for you so make sure you stay connected do not distance yourself like the page we are also on instagram on youtube uh, we have a website i believe everything will be in um, the page on the page so make sure you tune in and thank you so much god bless you i hope you enjoyed it i hope we also possibly open your mind to certain things about Christmas and about the topics of the church, about the church itself. Um, once again, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and stay connected.